Hi everyone. Okay, so I've wanted to film this video for a really long time now, so I'm happy that I'm finally able to sit down and share with you guys my portfolio that got me accepted into art school, or more specifically, Emily Carr University, which is located in Vancouver, Canada. I think this video will be a little bit longer than what I'm used to and what, you know, you guys probably want to watch, so I'll have important uh, times linked in the description box in case you want to jump ahead. And yeah, these types of videos helped me a lot when I was applying to school, so hopefully, you know, you guys will find it useful if you're also applying to art school. So I spent pretty much a year building my portfolio, and I know it kind of sounds a bit overkill, but uh, COVID hit and I was at home doing literally nothing, so I thought I might as well start it now. And I pretty much started it from scratch because I didn't really have any big pieces at the time that I wanted to put into a portfolio. Um, I pretty much was just working in a sketchbook like like this size. And yeah, I didn't really have any like good pieces, so I literally started from scratch. A lot of people have AP art at school. I didn't, so it was, again, kind of hard because I had to kind of work on my pieces kind of by myself. I didn't really have much direction uh, from school. The only person that really, really helped me on my portfolio was my art teacher. He was amazing. He made a club for like me and a couple other students who were building their portfolios. So we would, you know, go after school and he would help us a lot. So a lot of the tips today are things that my art teacher had told me. His tips really helped me out for building my portfolio and developing the concepts from my all of my work. Emily Carr is a very conceptual school, so I really had to work on developing my, not only my techniques, but definitely my ideas behind all of my pieces. Uh, a lot of art schools are either technically like focused or conceptually focused. Emily Carr is more conceptual, so if you are applying to a school that's more conceptual, definitely work on your ideas and make sure that it definitely, it, it shows when you're looking at those pieces. They also really focus on diversity and exploration, so every piece in your portfolio should be a little bit different. Okay, also I would suggest putting your best piece at the beginning and your second best piece uh, at the end or something like that. Your two good pieces should be at the beginning and the end, the bad stuff can be in the middle because most of the people will just forget about that stuff anyway. So yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys all of my work. This is my first piece. It's called Reflection. Um, also, my, all of my slide room descriptions are disgusting. I wish I spent more time on them, but, you know, whatever. Learn from my mistakes, please. I feel like your descriptions should definitely um, reflect well on your pieces and mine just don't. So I'm like, okay, this illustration represents mental illness and the positive impact of growth, uh, reflection, and friendship. And that's all I said. And I put it's 9 by 11 inches and I did it in watercolor paint and Copic markers. Okay, so for my second piece, I don't have it here because I had painted a mural for my high school. It was kind of like my big project of grade 12. And again, my art teacher was amazing. He let me do it. I also made a video on it. it it's kind of a bad video because I did it a while ago, but whatever. Um, so it's called Journey, and I said, I'm super grateful to have been given the opportunity to paint a mural for my high school. My goal was not only to capture the feeling of moving on to a new chapter in life, but to highlight the many complex issues students face, including mental health impacts, fitting in, emotional and social development, and the pressures of schoolwork, especially during a global pandemic. I also wanted to focus on some positive aspects of my generation, such as equality, climate justice, and the ability to overcome modern problems while still moving forward and paving the way for the future. Um, I think that's a run-on sentence, it's kind of gross, but anyways, at the end of my descriptions I always say the size and the medium that I had done it in, so it's 4 feet by 4 feet, and it's acrylic on drywall. Okay, the next piece I have with me, this is called entropy. For this piece, I explored the concept of entropy and the connection between life and death within an underwater ecosystem. 12 by 12 inches, ink, felt, markers, and gel pens. Okay, some of my descriptions are, are pretty short, which I think is okay, because honestly, the people don't want to hear they don't want to read an essay for every art piece. I think art should speak for itself as well, but the description kind of just helps it along. So my next piece, I actually really like this one. I think it's my favorite um, that I did. It's called Oversaturated. 
This drawing represents the feeling of being overwhelmed. That there is only so much we can process before it becomes too much to handle and we reach our maximum capacity, which in turn causes sensory overload. 9 by 12 pencil crayons. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think this description really does it justice, but again, I don't think the descriptions are gonna make or break you getting into art school or not. So, next piece. I actually want to talk a bit about this because if I was applying now, I would not be putting this one in. I think I did an okay job, I like it, but I copied it um, from an image or like a photo that I saw on Pinterest and I didn't really change it up too much, so I think it's borderline plagiarism. <laughs> so again, if you're using references, which I actually did for a lot of these, just make sure you're changing it up a lot. And this I did at the beginning of my portfolio and I didn't quite understand that, but yeah, I just, I wouldn't put something like this in my portfolio now, I would change it up a bit. or. I, I would take my own reference photo. But anyway, the description I said was, in this drawing I was practicing the way fabric falls on a human figure, while also exploring the emotions of isolation and confinement. Okay, next piece. This was like one of my first oil paintings that I did, or like one of my first still life oil paintings. This still life painting is about my past obsessions as a child. The Unicorn Pegasus was a Halloween costume that when I was six years old, I treated more like everyday clothes. I typically wore this with my two favorite necklaces. My love for Disney movies still hasn't changed much, but back then I was extremely obsessed with Lilo and Stitch and The Lion King. I was also very proud of my karate belt. After a long or after a lot of practice and my first grading, I could finally be as cool as some of my favorite crime stopping martial arts movie characters. And it is 16 inches by 20. And originally I thought the lady who was critiquing my portfolio at National Portfolio Day wasn't going to like it because, again, I heard Emily Carr is a very conceptual school, so I didn't know if they were going to like a still life painting because it's really not super conceptual. But she really liked it because she said it showed my personality. So, you know, all of your pieces, they don't need to be some crazy weird stuff. If you like to paint still lifes or you like to do like figure drawings or whatever, you can still like make it your own and you can have like make your own twist on it so yeah this next painting i don't have because it was a commission so i gave it to the lady that i was working with but yeah the title is just commission painting this was a commission painting created for a family friend of her beloved grandsons 16 by 20 oil painting okay next one it's a sculpture of a fox with a butterfly on its nose I created this sculpture because I'm interested with the concepts of anthropomorphism and symbiotic relationships. The fox symbolizes playfulness and wisdom, while the butterfly symbolizes transformation and hope. The butterfly is providing the fox with the ability to transform, while at the same time the fox is giving the butterfly wisdom. I believe that in order to grow and develop, we need to connect with our surroundings and learn from those around us. The base is 12 inches by 19 inches, and the height is 9.5 inches, and the materials I used were air dry clay, yarn, and origami paper. The next piece I did was in my grade 12 art class, my visual art class. Okay, so the description, <laughs> oh, that's so big. My room is small, so I'll have everything like scattered around. Okay, so the description of this painting was, this was a high school studio arts project exploring the personal connections and self-identity that exist, exists in an imaginary realm. I chose to explore my Egyptian heritage because I'm constantly learning new things about my family. Because of my dad's difficulties as a young person immigrating to Canada and trying to fit in, I didn't grow up with much Egyptian culture. I've always felt a sense of disconnection and that's why I gave my painting the feeling of mystery and uncertainty. And it is 26 by 20 and it is made with acrylic paints. So this last piece of my portfolio was a video that I did. I actually worked really hard on it and I also have a video or the completed video up on my YouTube. So definitely um, go check that out after you're done watching this video. Basically, I practiced doing some animation and I also practicing doing some like filming stuff, but it was before I got my good camera, so yeah, the quality's not the best, but you know, I'm so good. So I called it, what are you? What are you is a question I am typically asked because people are often confused about my cultural background. 
After telling them I'm half Egyptian, it's difficult answering their questions, considering I don't know much about my Egyptian heritage. For me, my dad's assimilation has always been a source of curiosity. With this in mind, I created this short film focusing on my feelings and emotions towards my background and my journey of self-discovery through food, books, art, and family. And I also added that the animation was created in Procreate. That is the bulk of my portfolio. So again, Emily Carr really wants to see a portfolio and art that's unique to you and that shows your creative thinking and your style. Um, your ability and your technique isn't really as important because you're going to school and you're going to learn anyway, but they definitely want to see your voice through your art and your concepts. And I think that's pretty similar with a lot of art schools, but definitely research what your school wants because it changes and it'll um, differ from school to school. Also, tailor your uh, portfolio to the program you're applying for. I, uh, for Emily Carr, there's a foundation year, so I didn't have to worry about uh, keeping all of my pieces like one thing because yeah, there's a foundation year, it doesn't matter. But if you're applying to, let's say, an animation program, they definitely want things that are connected to animation, like character design, background design, all that kind of stuff. So don't show them like I don't know, photography if you're, that's not what you're applying for. Another thing, most universities um, make you apply through Slide Room, and it's actually really easy to use. But the one thing that I didn't understand was like how to put multiple pictures of the same piece but not let it count for like different things because at Emily Carr we were only allowed 10 pieces but like, I had a sculpture and I didn't know how to put like maybe two images of the sculpture without taking up two spaces. So I ended up just taking one picture of the sculpture which kind of sucked because they didn't get you know different angles but I don't know if you guys know the answer to that just put it in the comments below i'm sure it'll be helpful for a lot of people who you know need that information so for emily carr we had three prompts that we needed to do the first one was in one original image or 20 second media clip answer the question how is creativity important for both the individual and the community this was actually the last prompt that i worked on I was rushing it and I hate how it turned out, but you know what, whatever. My inspiration was like a female Banksy. Her pieces could empower like other people seeing them. So I don't know. Anyways, second one. In three original images, tell us a story about yourself. So I chose karate. Karate has been a big part of my life since I was little. And I got to go to Japan in 2019. It was a trip of a lifetime. I learned a lot, I had a lot of fun. So I did three digital uh, illustrations, you know, leading up to that, like me growing up in the dojo and finally getting to go on this epic trip to Japan. So yeah. Okay, third and last prompt, which was the hardest. And I worked with my art teacher on this. So thank you, Mr. Randall. Okay, using three different materials, build a model of what you would put in the center of a public space, including processes, sketches, and photographs. Another hard thing was like, they only let us put one image in here. So it's like, how do we show uh, the sketches and photographs and stuff if you're only allowing us to put like one attachment in? So anyways, I collaged all of my, you know, brainstorming pages and the final image into one. This ugly thing <laughs> is made with paper. This is also paper. I painted it. You know, I kind of cheated on this because it's literally, there are more than three materials here, but whatever. Paper, wood, and cardboard. And it's about capitalism because money sucks. Our capitalistic and consumerism driven society has prioritized profit and power through money, which undermines the environment. But with the right intentions, we can rejuvenate our world by putting our selfishness behind and giving back to our planet. And I ended up editing uh, fake money onto the paper and cardboard to make it a little bit more realistic. And then I put it into an area in Vancouver that I wanted the sculpture to go into. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, I really didn't like any of the three prompts I did. I left them kind of last minute and I felt like I could have done better on them. But at the same time, what are you gonna do about it, you know? I spent a lot of time on building my main portfolio and I personally think that's the stuff that matters the most because they get to see kinda, you know, the things that you like to do and what you're really good at. 
So yeah, just make sure that's strong and then, you know, do your best and I guess that's all you, all you can do. I want to now talk a little bit on my experience at National Portfolio Day. It was very interesting. Um, I stress out a lot and I was extremely, extremely nervous for my meeting with this lady. Because I only applied to one art school, I felt like I needed to get in and I was, yeah, I was super nervous. Obviously, COVID ruined everything for me. Um, so National Portfolio Day was online, which, like, it was okay. A funny story, I literally joined the meeting, like, 10 minutes late when it, Oh my god, it was so stressful because, like, I couldn't find the proper Zoom link that they sent me. I was literally sweating. I had sweat stains, like, this deep. Oh my god. And I was like, yeah, 10 minutes late. For this meeting that only takes 10 minutes so i was super scared but then yeah she was super nice and she was like oh it happens to everyone and it was a different length that i sent it's totally okay so yeah that just added to the stress even more but like i said she was super nice and she really liked my stuff she liked the concepts behind my work she liked the techniques that i used the colors um just the overall uh rendering of my stuff and the one tip she gave me was to take a picture of my sculpture behind a white background so the background isn't distracting. If you also applied to art school or if you have any questions, please comment them down below. I would love to read them and I'm sure people looking at this video to try and get into art school would really appreciate your input as well and your experiences and stories and whatever. If art school in Canada or just art school in general interests you, I'm gonna try and do art school vlogs every couple of weeks. I had my orientation and tour the other day, so I'm excited. So yeah, definitely stick around if that interests you. And thank you so much for watching my video. Yeah, bye guys.